growing up, were there specific curlers that you looked up to as role models? Uh, I did. Let's uh, Sandra Schmerler. Okay. She was one of my favorites. Um, Greg McCauley, he's my uncle, and he won the Briar in 2000. Growing up, I guess when I was very young, I always looked up to Colleen Jones because she was the one winning all the Canadian championships at the time. And then um, on the men's side, I always looked up to Stoughton and Martin. Now it's it's really great to kind of be in a competition where we potentially get to play against some of those teams at the, at the Scotties. I uh, grew up watching Connie Laliberti and then got an opportunity to play against her. And of course Jennifer Jones, like she was, when I played her in 04 here, we actually played her in the in the playoff game. And she just had such a, such a wonderful demeanor on the ice and so skilled. Honestly, I would have to say Kathy O. <laughs> That's totally cool. Definitely was one of the ones where, you know, they, her and Jennifer always did really well, so I always watch them kind of going further and further each year. Definitely Jennifer Jones' team. I look up to Jennifer Jones, definitely, and Eve Muirhead, because she's so young and playing at such a high competitive level. I started my junior career playing against like Jen Jones and Kelly Scott, for example. Like, she was Kelly McKenzie back then, and she was a world junior champion. And I had to get past them, you know, so that sort of was the early introduction. And... How would you describe the evolution of the sport? Are there noticeable changes that you can identify nowadays versus when you first started playing? Training's huge in the sport now. Um, back in the day, it wasn't really that much, uh, even though they use those corn brooms, <laughs> they're pretty tough. But uh, nowadays, everyone's in great shape, and you have to be to uh, play at this level. I've curled for about 30 years now, so um, when we first started out, it was, you know, not as much focus on physical activity and maybe nutrition as there is today. And now the girls are getting stronger and they're working out more and they're taking nutrition more seriously. Sweeping is a lot of work. People might not consider it watching it on TV, but it definitely is. Uh, so physical fitness is huge in um, being competitive. It's not just sitting and having a beer, it's going out and working out. I think that the women's have really stepped up with the fitness level, the strength training. Um, I think it's a must in our sport today to be able to uh, compete against everyone else and to be able to manage those three game days for sure. How much training and exercise is involved in your weekly routine? Starting in the summer, uh, we started going to a uh, personal trainer. Uh, usually once or twice a week. I think it's really improved like all of our fitness. We've worked with a personal trainer this year to try and strengthen our legs, strengthen our arms and the girls, you know, for their sweeping to get stronger as well. Everyone is kind of responsible for their own fitness. I know one works with a personal trainer, um, one does a lot on her own and uh, I myself, I do a lot of lifting toddlers and... <laughs> well, I can speak to my girls and my sweepers because they are very fit young ladies. Uh, mine is, is a little bit more of the mental prep, I guess, because that's more the part of my game. I do yoga quite a bit and the girls do the gym, so it's just a age difference, I think. Yeah. <laughs> is it, like, how, how, how did you decide on yoga specifically? Um, a lot of the breathing and the stretching and, and just the relaxation part of the yoga, you really bring a lot of that into the game and I find that's very helpful. All right, joining us now on Hurry Hard, the development manager at Curling Manitoba is Elaine Owen. Elaine, thank you for joining us. What does your role entitle? What do you all do as a development manager? Well, I do a lot of different things, but basically I try and develop the sport in Manitoba. I have probably eight to ten different programs for different age groups. And uh, I also look after rules, regulations, eligibility, all those things for competitions. And do you have a background in curling as well? How long have you kind of been doing the development side of things for? Uh, I've worked for Curl Manitoba, I think, for about 10 years. Um, and I was a competitive player for a lot of years before that. So I have been in curling a long time. Great. Well, one of the main things we want to talk about today, new to Manitoba, the hit, draw, tap competition, similar to something called uh, punt, pass, kick in the NFL. So explain it for us. What is hit, draw, and tap? Hit Draw Tap is a new program we just developed this year and it's uh, to get the youth really involved on an individual basis since curling is a team sport and it's hard at a young age to get a team. So you enter individually and we have three categories, six to eight year olds and yes they can get on the ice and experience this and do well. Uh, nine to eleven year olds and then uh, twelve and thirteen year olds. So we have three different categories and the young kids will play in the near house and the uh, older kids will play full sheet. Final's gonna be at the Viteria Championship in Portage between uh, the final and the semifinal on the Sunday. All right. 
So explain some of the shots then these kids will have to make. Are they straightforward shots or is there some difficulty to them? What are the shots they'll be facing? Um, the shots will be pretty simple for an adult, but for the kids it'll be a little tougher. So on the hit shot, they're going to have to hit a rock out of the house so it goes out of bounds and stick in the house. And uh, for the draw, they have to draw somewhere in the house so that it's in play. And then for the tap, they're just going to tap a rock to the back of the house. So it's going to be a little bit different for them and it's going to be a fun thing for them to try. They are going to get one try, practice try before they do the real thing. So they'll be happy about that. And then we're going to award points for different placement in the house. Now this event goes on elsewhere as well. It's just new to Manitoba, but it goes on elsewhere. And the only other place I know that we borrowed the program from kind of was Ontario. Curl Ontario last year had uh, 400 kids participate. So our goal is to have 500 kids participate in Manitoba just because we're a competitive curling province and we'd like to outdo Ontario as everyone's well aware in this province anyway. And so we're really pushing it for uh, great participation at all the club level. And we've actually had a really good response already for so early in the season. Well, it's gonna be so cool for these kids uh, if they're in the final, if they make the final at the Viterra Championship in front of a lot of people. What do you hope the kids, uh, any kid who goes uh, into this, what do you hope they gain out of this? I hope they gain the fact that anyone can make shots at curling and that they can uh, play on a team or play with a friend or just do one-on-one -on -one. and that's the idea behind it is to just get them out have some fun have some laughs and not make it as structured as it has been in the past. Elaine Owen thank you very much coming up next on Hurry Hard we take a look at some upcoming events.